Today, on Be Something Wonderful, consciously direct your mind to fulfillment. I am your host, Tom Karen, and this is the Be Something Wonderful studio of higher consciousness, where we help you level up and become the best version of yourself. Creators, welcome back. I had an amazing session last night with a client, and this was a follow-up session. And when I first talked to her, the discussion centered around um, uh, trying to direct her thoughts and what to do when, quote, unwanted or undesired thoughts come up. And another part of the conversation was that she had a niece that had a drug problem. She was taking drugs, she was sad, and she was depressed. And so we had talked about that. We talked about all of, all of the things that we talk about every day, that, that it's, about, it's about choosing, right? It's about choosing, it's about focusing on your wish fulfilled. It's about consciously directing your thoughts to the image, to the feeling, to the, to the ideal of your wish fulfilled, what you want. So we talked about that and, and we, we talked about this idea that, that instead of seeing her, her niece on drugs with a problem, see her niece happy, see her niece laughing, see her niece smiling. That implies that she's no longer taking drugs, that she's no longer sad, that she's no longer depressed. So she, she books a session, we talked last night, she starts out and says, Tom, I just wanna say you were right. <laughs> At the time when I had talked to her, I said that what will happen as she imagines this, as she directs her thoughts, as she directs her imagining, she directs her imagination, as she consciously directs it, right, through her conscious objective mind, that, that, that she'll see that and imagines her niece just happy, it will just, one day her niece will just decide. It will be like that. It will just decide not that she doesn't want to take drugs anymore, that it's just not for her. That's exactly what happened. She said, Tom, she just said she doesn't want to do this anymore. She doesn't want to take drugs. She, she, she wants to be better. She wants to be more. This is powerful. And so I want to talk about, about what my client discovered about herself and about her processes that are already innate and within her. So let's start. The BSW client, she, here's the first thing. She's a teacher of young children. And this was one of her self-discoveries. She said, well, with children, with her children that she teaches, the perfect analogy is suggestion. Because if she tries to tell them not to do something or what to do, they're gonna clearly do the opposite, right? So the perfect analogy of the power of suggestion when undesired or opposite thoughts come up, right? So she treats her 3D objective personal mind like a child. <laughs> Instead of going at, it, going at it directly, resisting the thoughts, trying to tell it what to do, she, she suggests this, just like she suggests to her young kids. What she suggests to her children in class is, maybe you don't want to do that. Maybe you want to do this. <laughs> and then they think, well, yeah, I want to do that. I, yeah, I'll do that, which he's suggesting. It's coming off as a suggestion. So this is what she, don't you, this is what she says to her, to her 3D personality, right? To that part of her conscious mind that, that's directed by the passing whims, desires, thoughts, and, and emotions. Don't you want to think about this instead? How powerful is that? Just like with their children. Don't you want to do this instead? Don't you want to think about this instead? That's powerful. That's resistant free. Wow, I love this. It's along the lines of the, my other client that said, I don't live there anymore. This is another one. Don't, do, don't you want to think about this instead, right? Th this is a perfect demonstration of the law of substitution, right? In other words, like children, you cannot force or coerce or dismiss your thoughts directly. You've got to substitute them. You've got to suggest the power of suggestion on the, on the subconscious mind. You've got to suggest something else. Wow, powerful. So let's take the other piece of this. A niece on drugs. She imagined, she affirmed, and she announced that her niece is perfect. Right? Remember, God announces the reality. This is what she did with a combination of affirmations, with a combination of imagining her wish fulfilled, with knowing that she can consciously direct her mind to her fulfillment. 
Wow! So she imagined her smiling and happy. And she even imagined others saying, wow, she's so different now. Hear this, the people that are close to her. Imagining them saying, wow, she's so different now. And what happened? Exactly that. She stopped taking drugs, decided to. And then her, her mother and others around her are saying, wow, she's so different now, right? My, the client to me, like you said, she just decided to stop. That's what my client said to me. Just like you said, she decided to stop. Her mother, what, and during this time, remember, others were not seeing that, right? She's the conscious creator, my client, her mother, my, the client's mother um, said she's so sad and depressed about the niece. You kept saying it, right? Kept reminding my client that, that the niece is sad and depressed. Not offering a solution, not, <laughs> not, not thinking uh, the, the opposite of it, not thinking that she's happy, and said just pointing it out. And, say, and my client, who didn't want to have anything to do with it, her, her mother was saying, well, you're in denial. Well, yes, <laughs> she is in denial because she knows she can consciously create what she wants. It's not the denial that, that many think it is. You're just denying that negative thought, that, that the unwanted, right, without resisting it, right? So she went into her imagination and closed the door. A powerful image with affirmations, consciously directing her mind to her desired end. Wow, let's unpack this a little bit more. So... Remember, what was she really using? When you're consciously directing your mind, you're using your willpower. But I'm not talking about the 3D personality, what, you, what the 3D personality thinks is willpower. Trying to effort something, trying to make something happen, trying to force or coerce the conditions, mentally or physically. We're not talking about that. We're talking about the only power there is, the will of God, right? That, that's the God power, that's your real willpower. That's the real definition of willpower, right? God power, that power of infinite intelligence, the power of the universal mind, which remember that you are one with. And as you turn to it, it turns to you. It knows you more as you know it more, right? Your will is God's will. God turns to us. It's what Ernest Holmes from the science of the mind says. I love this. God turns to us as we turn to him. There is a reciprocal action between the universal and the individual mind. Spirit is ready to help us whenever we turn to it. This is really what I went over in detail, very powerfully, yesterday in yesterday's video. This is the video on the membership channel. And it, we talked about this reciprocity between the intelligent mind, God's mind, the mind of God in your mind. They're one. But you can't recognize that until you turn to it. That universal mind can't work through you, as you, right? So I love this. God turns to us as we turn to him. There's a reciprocal action between the universal and the individual mind. Spirit is ready to help us whenever we turn to it. Ernest Holmes, Science of the Mind. Perfect, powerful, perfect and powerful. So God, infinite intelligence, the universal mind, God's word, in other words, the thought, intention, of desire. Remember, your word is God's word. It's the same. That God's word or that thought or God's thought or God's intention or God's desire is simply an announcement of reality. God announces reality. This is what my client did. She announced it through her word, through her imaginal act, through her affirmation. She announced the reality of her niece laughing, smiling with with no, no addiction to drugs, no problem with drugs, happy, right? Wow. So in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. That's what we're talking about. God announces it and becomes it. The beginning meaning eternity. Before Abraham was, I am. Before Abraham, I am. Period. Before Abraham, I am. There is no beginning. There is no ending. There's just God, right? In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. It is the creative power, the substance, and the love of God, the universal mind. One, one, one. Remember we talked about this. It's the creative power. The Word is the creative power. The Word is the substance. The Word is the love of God, of the universal mind. I am that I am. I am that I am. The only I am. Do you hear what God was saying there? I am. Who, who are you? Moses, who, who should I say sent you? 
who sent me <laughs> and tell them that I am that I am sent you. That's what God's message to Moses was. One, one, one. I'm that I am. The only I am. The greatest I am, right? And then Jesus called it the greatest commandment. Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God. The Lord is one. He called it the greatest commandment. The most prominent, the foremost commandment is saying that you're one, one, one. Wow, that's powerful. This is big. The 3D personality, hear this. This is such a big, big idea. The 3D personality is not intended to create reality, but to enjoy it. Not intended to create reality, but to experience it. Not intended to create reality, but to love it. Wow! Do you hear this? All this time we're fighting with that 3D personality trying to create what we want. But it's just there to enjoy it. To enjoy the perception of your mind, right? To, be, to, to enjoy it. As a, so so it doesn't make, it's, not, it's not intended to create, but to enjoy. Not intended to create, but to experience. Not intended to create, but to love it, right? The conscious, objective mind is inductive. Remember that, that, that piece. It's not like the subconscious mind. It's inductive and chooses, decides, and selects which thoughts, ideas, and intentions are allowed through the door. What's the door? I am. Remember, Jesus says, I am the door. I am the way. I am the life. That's the door, the way, the life. Into that greater creative medium of God or the subconscious. It's the door to that greater medium of God, the subconscious mind. But remember, the subconscious mind, your part is that personal atmosphere of that one mind, of that greater subconscious. Your subconscious is just the personal atmosphere of that greater subconscious. You decide what goes through the door just like my client, right? She decided what goes through that door. She chose, she imagined, she affirmed, she announced reality. So powerful today. So the universal mind of God is impersonal. Remember, it's impersonal, meaning it only thinks in unity or oneness. It doesn't see itself separate from anything or anyone. That's its power. That's what makes it infinite. That's what makes it all powerful, all present right? And all knowing. That, what, what does it? Because it's impersonal. It's one, 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 one. All powerful, all present, and all knowing. And it's deductive. I mean, its word is an announcement of reality. That's what deductive means. You announce it and you are it. This is the law of assumption. The law of assumption says you announce it, you assume it, and you are it. You decide the concept of yourself. You decide what reality you're going to occupy or what you're what reality you're going to experience, what version of yourself you're going to occupy. It's an announcement. It's both completely objective and subjective. Why? Because it's one. Right? What does that mean? That means that universal mind, which you're one with, God, divine mind, is, has complete objectivity. Complete objectivity is observes all things as they really are. That's being completely objective. Hear this. You observe... It's, it, the observer of all. That's the complete objectivity. That's the universal mind, unaffected by what is observed, unaffected by the contents. Hear this. So it, it has complete objectivity, which means that it can observe everything, but not be identified or believe it is part of it. It knows it's a projection of that mind. It's unaffected by the contents. That's complete objectivity. And it also has, this universal mind, complete subjectivity. Completely subjective means reality is subject to the direction of the completely objective mind. Wow. Subject to its order. Subject to its command. Subject to its thought, its intention, its desire. Subject to the word. Wow, that's big. So, so what about you? How do you fit in in all this? Well, because you... you Consciously, because you consciously, because, because you're conscious, <laughs> forgot that out there, because your conscious objective mind sees through the lens of separation, it's, it's objectively, it, it is objectively, it, obje it is objectively limited Partially, right? It only sees partial. It's limited. Partial. Me versus everything else. So it, it's objective. It's limited. It has a partial view of things, right? As the perceiver of reality, you identify with and get tangled up in the perceptions. The perceptions of what? The perceptions of your minds, 
right? Because your conscious objective mind sees through the lens of separation. In other words, it sees a partial reality. It sees it's partially objective. It's limited, right? It's not completely objective like the mind of God. It has partial objectivity. And it sees, it sees the perception through the perceiver. It gets tangled up. It believes that it is the perceptions. Do you see this? And, and so you define and identify yourself with and as the experience of reality versus the observer of reality versus the projector of it, right? You do not equal your experience. You do not equal your conditions. You do not equal the events. You do not equal your thoughts, your emotions, your feelings. You're none of it. Who you really are, the real you, is the observer of it all. Completely objective, completely subjective. But through the 3D personality, remember, the 3D personality is designed to enjoy it, designed to love, love it, designed to experience it, but without getting too tangled up in it, believing it is it. That's the optimal, right? That's what we're talking about here. Your conscious objective mind sees through the lens of separation. But, it's, but because, it, it, because it's separate but not ever separated, right? It, it's able to experience reality. It's only because it's, a, it's partial, right? It's not impartial. It's partial view. It's partial objectivity, right? Me versus everything else that it believes it is that reality. That's what gets in the way, right? Wow, that's powerful. So unless you are consciously directing your ideas, your thoughts and intentions, your objective mind, in other words, your objective mind, someone or something else is, hear this, unless you are consciously directing your ideas, your thoughts, your intentions, your objective mind, someone or something else is directing it. You're moved by the subconscious scripts you didn't choose, right? We've talked about this in reality, transurfing. This is what Neville Goddard gets at when he talks about you have free will, the freedom to choose. After that, you don't have free will. Why? Because you get to choose. But if you don't choose, if you don't consciously direct what Neville is saying, then you're going to be moved, all right, by the con the un by unconsciously by the subconscious script, by that greater subconscious, right? You are either choosing your experience of reality or it is being chosen for you. Wow. Right? By that greater subconscious where you have no say in the matter, right? Free will, this is what Neville Goddard says, free will is only freedom of choice, right? He says his illusion, or man, his illusion of free will, his belief in freedom of action is but the ignorance of the cause which make, which make the causes which make him act. That's what he was getting at, right? Unless you are consciously directing the freedom to choose your thoughts, ideas, and intentions, then you're not being moved to what you'll want. You're being moved by something or something else that may or may not have your higher interests in mind. Wow. Free will is only freedom of choice. His illusion of free will, his belief in freedom of action is but ignorance of the causes which make him act. So powerful. So there's nothing you need to do to earn it. It's yours. God chose you. You are the chosen one. God gave you this. By the grace of God, you have this gift to direct that greater power, to direct that, con that, that subjective mind, the universal mind. But you can't go at it directly. You can't hit it direct. Just like my client would make a suggestion to her children, right? You can't go at it directly, trying to di consciously di uh, hit it and fight with it and resist it. Instead, you make a suggestion. Remember what Jesus said. You did not choose me, but I chose you, that you would go and bear fruit and that your fruit would remain so that whatever you ask of the Father in my name, I am, I, he may give to you. That's powerful. God chose you, right? You are the chosen one, right? This is what Jesus is saying, that I am, that I, that I is that greater, that greater I, right? That universal mind, that's the I, that's the I of the I, right? Jesus brought, and remember, in, in the Old Testament, it talked about the law, and it referred to the Lord in capital letters. It was talking about the law of being, the law of cause and effect, the law of correspondence, right? That's why you, you, sit, you hear a lot about fearing the Lord or the law. It means, remember, the, the translation of fear means to be in awe of. But what Jesus brought with the New Testament is Jesus brought love to the law. Right? The consciousness of love flowing through you at all times. I am equals love. 
right? Jesus brought that I am awareness, that I am awareness that you are one with it through love, right? That's big. So do not think that I came to destroy the law or the prophets. I did not come to destroy, but to fulfill. This is Jesus in Matthew 5, 17. The I am, the love, love came to, to fulfill, not to destroy, right? For fulfillment, I, the real you, I, I came. I did not come to destroy. That's the real you, that's the I, that's the I, the I. Your conscious objective mind is the I of the I, right? It is the consciousness of that greater I. It is the door, right? I am is love, I am is fulfillment. Raising your awareness of the real you raises your vibration to that love. That's what my client did, right? She had so much love for her niece. Right? She felt that love. She became that love. She directed that love, that I am this, that higher power into what she wanted. Consciously direct your mind to fulfillment, a powerful demonstration. I am your host, Tom Karen, and this is the Be Something Wonderful studio of higher consciousness, where we help you level up and become the best version of yourself. Creators, um, don't forget to subscribe, hit the notification button, like and share our videos. That's how we get our message out. You can hit us up on Facebook at Be Something Wonderful. We have a group called the Be Something Wonderful Ambassadors. You can find us there at facebook.com slash groups slash Be Something Wonderful. It's a completely open group for the join. Then it's private once you join and you, share, you can share insights and ask for insights and guidance among other members privately without it being shared to the world. And you can also follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Tom Karen. Or just go to our website anytime for all that information and more at TomKaren.com or BeSomethingWonderful.com. With great love, with great light, and infinite gratitude, creators, see you soon.